So now we are parting, starting with the next part of the lecture, which is basically about confidence interval. So before we understand what a confidence interval and everything around that, uh, the basic concept that we want to start off with, which is point estimator and interval estimator or confidence interval range estimator, however you want to call it. So one easy way of estimating something about population is say, hey, this is what my sample mean is. And I think this is exactly the same thing that my population mean would be. That's fairly fine as well. And some a second way of doing it is saying that, hey, I think this is my sample mean. And I think because of the way I've taken my sample and the sample size is small, I think there should be some, uh, you know, some error adjustment that I should do. So my population, so if my, if my sample mean is 50, I think my population is 50 plus minus two or three, right? So that plus minus is basically an error adjustment that you're trying to do, right? So you're saying that I am not very sure about what I've done so that my actual estimate would lie definitely within 50 plus minus two, three, right? So for example, if you have hundred population of thousand people attending an event, we want to find the average age of the audience. So point estimate is mean age of the audience is 25 years, right? And the interval estimate would be something like, Hey, I think it's between 22 to 28 years. So which is 25 plus minus three years, right? So point estimate, for example, in case of a estimation. So in case of estimation, we already saw that X bar is a sample mean and you can directly use it to predict your population mean. And if you want to predict your sample variance, you can directly sample standard deviation. You can just multiply. You want to estimate, sorry, population standard deviation. Then you can just multiply your sample standard deviation into root n, n being the sample size. And that's perfectly fine with estimates, right? Point estimate. So now John has a second experiment in his mind. So keep that in mind. That's what we talked about point estimate and interval estimates. So now John has a second experiment. John wants to test if he has, if he takes thousand houses instead of 500 houses, will those houses contain the population mean too? Uh, he thinks that it might not contain the population mean. And so if so, he will have to take another sample of thousand. So how many times would he have to do this, right? So thanks to programming, it's uh, easy to make, take many sample, but he wants to be confident that the population mean is content within his samples majority of the times. So confused, that's okay. John basically wants to check if the confidence interval of the mean of his sample of thousand data sets. Just chill. What John is basically concerned about here is if he's taking thousand times, he's taking the mean of the house thousand times, then he is basically concerned whether the population mean would lie within a confidence interval or not. So confidence interval is a range of values. We are fairly sure that our true value lies in. That's basically the simplest but true explanation of confidence interval. So for example, we are saying something say about population mean. We basically, instead of saying that, hey, I think my sample mean is exactly my population mean uh, or my population mean is basically exactly my sample mean. I can say my population mean is sample mean plus minus some uh, small interval, right? So, and basically what we are saying is that uh, I'm sure that that within that interval, my value, definitely my population mean would definitely lie, right? So let's build our intuition with help of an example. So example, average height. So we measure the height uh, of 40 random P chosen men and get a mean height of 175 centimeter and a standard deviation of 20 centimeter. Now, if you had to estimate what is the population height using a point estimate, if you had to do a point estimate, you would say, Hey, I think my sample height is 175 centimeter. I think the average height is also population mean is also 175 centimeter, right? There's no confidence interval in case of a point estimate, but now you want to do a, you want to basically do a interval estimate. You would say, uh, my height, the, I think the average height of the population is 175 plus minus 6.2 centimeters. And this is a concept of interval estimation. Now, how did we come up with this 6.2? We'll kind of learn that later. But there's something else also we are talking about. So this is a 95% confidence interval. What does 95% confidence interval kind of say? That is interesting, right? Because we have not, so we are all fine with this idea of uh, confidence interval. Confidence is, interval is basically saying that within this interval, I'm sure I'm confident my value would lie. My population mean or population, whatever I'm trying to predict, population median would definitely lie within my sample median plus minus this interval range, right? But now you're saying suddenly something called 95% interval, confidence interval. So what does 95% confidence interval say? 
So this whole thing that my 95% confidence interval will be 175 plus minus 6.2 centimeters. How do we interpret that? It says that the true men of all men, if we could measure their heights, all men in this world would be likely between 168.8 centimeter and 181.2 centimeter. But it might not be right. That's impossible. Right? We already know that just from that statement, we know that it's not possible to have height of all possible men in this world between 168 centimeter and 188. So that's something that's definitely wrong. So the 95% confidence interval says that if we do this measure this height of people right and we do this experiment sample multiple times 95% of the times the experiments like we did will basically include the true mean but 5% would not right so this the statement 95% confidence interval is between 175 plus minus 6.2 centimeters says that 95% of the times the true mean would actually lie between in this range right 175 plus minus 5% time it would not so there's a 1 in a 20 chance that our confidence interval does not include the true mean so step 1 note down so how do we now that's the that's the understanding of 95% confidence interval right so confidence interval basically is giving you a range interval of values right you're saying that the population mean lies within this interval so that's what your uh, confidence interval is giving you right but the confidence interval is not an absolute confidence interval it's just saying that 90 that's a 95% confidence interval we can have 99% confidence interval we can have 99.99% confidence we never can have 100% though just keep that in mind because if you do 100% interval that would say minus infinity and plus infinity so we'll get to that why that is the case but the understanding is this you can always have 95% confidence interval, 90% confidence interval and so on and so forth, right? So what this confidence interval basically says that is if you do this experiment say 20 times, out of those 20 times there's a 1% one time it would not, your mean would basically not lie in a sample in, the, in that interval that is being given out, right? So that is a concept so we'll kind of understand that also a bit more clearly later. So first step, how do we calculate the confidence interval? So note down the number of samples and calculate the mean and standard deviation. So we have done all of that. Sample size is uh, 40, mean is 175, standard deviation is 20. So how do we calculate the standard deviation? So first decide what is the confidence interval you are kind of looking at. So confidence interval we want is could be 90%, as I say 95, 99, other common choices. You could have any arbitrary choice as well. But in all standard industry applications everywhere, you are either using 90%, 95% or 99%. So then you find the Z value for that corresponding confidence interval here. Remember the formula for Z value, you should probably remember in case of normal distribution, when we wanted to convert into a standard normal distribution, we subtracted the mean and divided it by the standard deviation, right? So in this case, the standard deviation is sigma by root n right so just keep that in mind it's not any more sigma so you do so you calculate the value so z was so the z score whatever that comes out to be uh, for 95 percent value the z value is 1 1.960 from this particular table right so you can you remember this particular table as well so this table is basically the inverse of the cdf table that we have talked about earlier so this is the inverse of the CDF table. In CDF table, we had the values and correspondingly, uh, we had the CDF values. In this case, this is the inverse of CDF table where you have the Z CDF values and the corresponding Z scores for them, right? So from there, you can basically see for 95% confidence interval, the Z value is 1.960. So using that, you can basically say that, so your Z score basically should lie between plus minus 1.960. That's what it says. So if you want a 95% confidence interval, your Z score should lie between 1.960. So if your Z score has to lie between 1.960 plus minus 1.960, that means your actual confidence interval is 175 plus 1 plus minus 1.960 into 20 by root 40, right? So let me just kind of make that very clear out here. So now let's understand what we are talking about in this particular case. So this is your Z score. So this is distributed around zero and mean. And you want a 95% confidence interval, right? So 95% confidence interval means there's a 5%. So basically you are considered around this point. So this is a normal distribution. 
and you say so 95 percent means you want five percent error right so you basically have 2.5 percent here so this is our so so basically this is this value is 0 0.975 and this value is 0.975 right so 9 so 7 9.975 is basically this value this value is 0 0.975 and this value is 0.975 so now you want to basically get what is this particular value of z for which you get 0.975 right and that comes out to be 1.96 so then you know that for z score of z score of 1.96 z score of 1.96 you can very well claim that your with your values would basically 90 for a 95 percent 95 percent confidence interval 95% confidence interval you can claim that your z value should lie between 0 0.96 1 point sorry 1.96 and minus 1.96 and plus 1.96 right so this is x minus mu by sigma by root n right so then you can say that x should lie between sig mu plus 1.96 into sigma by root n and mu minus 1.96 into sigma by root n right so you basically check that for 0 0.975 value you get the z score as 1.96 right so so z score is basically 1.96 for this particular value to be 0 0.975 right because you want your values to lie between in a 95% confidence interval right so for that you basically need only 2. so 2.5% error on both the sides are permitted right so if you are only allowed 2.5% error so you basically get the value of 0.975 on both the sides and then you say that hey I think that is for this particular corresponding value 1.96 minus 1.96 so if my z score lies between 1 point plus minus 1.9 minus 1.96 and plus 1.96 i can be very well confident that the mean would basically be a 95 percent confidence right and then you say that hey z score lies between 1.96 and minus 1.96 so that means x minus mu by sigma lies between minus 1.96 and plus 1.96 right because this is your z score and then you say if this is the case then my x would should lie between mu plus 1.96 into sigma by root n and mu minus 1.96 into sigma by root n right so you do that entire calculation here and you see that 1.75 plus minus 6.2 centimeter so which is basically from 168.8 centimeter to 181.2 centimeter the value plus minus is called margin of error the margin of error in this example is 6.20 right so now we should so now coming back to john's experiment so john decides to carry out the experiment to see whether the houses do have true mean within the sample or not so let's get right into it so what now he does is he basically takes a sample of thousand examples and he then tries and calculate the sample mean and then he tries and see if that sample mean is basically within the confidence interval uh, sorry whether the population mean is within the confidence interval of the uh, of the interval that he would predict from the sample right so whether the population mean is within that sample interval that he would predict so obviously what he calculates is the confidence interval is 95% uh, confidence interval right in this case yeah so for that 95% confidence interval he gets a 1.644 as a critical value and based on that he calculates the confidence interval to be 178,000 to 186,000 now the true mean of the, in this case the population mean was actually 180,000 right which is exactly between the in this confidence interval right so John is absolutely awesomely happy right because he's suddenly found that uh, the confidence interval that he has predicted from his sample right so remember this that this confidence interval he predicted was from the sample in his sample he had thousand examples out of the 1460 houses and based on thousand examples he calculated the sample mean and based on the sample mean he calculated added the error on both the sides and predicted an interval and he was surprised and he was astonished that his actual population mean 
actually lied within that interval that he has predicted. So notice that the true mean is contained in the interval. A confidence interval of 95% would mean that the if we take any samples and create confidence interval for each of them, then 95% of our samples confidence intervals will contain the true population mean, right? So if we do this 20 times, the experiment John has done, probably one of those times the true mean population mean would probably not lie in that interval, but all the 19 times, uh, sorry, all the, yeah, we do that 20 times, only once it would not do, but the rest of the 19 times, if we do this, uh, the population mean would actually lie in the interval, right? Now, John is, John is kind of, uh, you know, he's actually excited about it. So, what he does is, he tries to now do this trial, actually 25 trials. And now, let's see what he does. So, what he does is, he's done doing the same trial thing, but he's gonna now, instead of doing this once, he does this 25 times. And in 25 times, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to calculate the sample mean and plot the interval. And then see out of those many times, how many times the population mean actually falls in the interval or not. Now, once you see this, you can clearly understand what he has done. So, these are the 25 trials he has done. The red line is the population mean. And you can see the population mean was actually within the interval in all those cases except one, right? So, this was 25 trials. So, 95% confidence interval says that yeah, roughly one time it would not be there and that's exactly what has happened, right? So 20, 25 trials, 95% confidence means that only 5% of the time it would not be there, right? So 5% of 25 is roughly 1.25. So rounded off, that's exactly what you have got. So one time it's not part of the, the population mean is actually not part of the sample mean. So it's not part of the interval that you have predicted, confidence interval. But for the rest of the times, it's absolutely, for all the rest of the 24 trials, right? You can see the population mean is absolutely part of the confidence interval. So that's the concept because it's a 95% confidence interval. In case you had done, gone for a 99% confidence interval, you would probably see out of those 25% times, 1%, right? 1% of 25 point. 25 is basically 0.2 which basically means almost never never ever would you basically have in not any one of your 25 trials would not contain your population mean there would not be a single trial where you would miss the population mean in the interval estimate right so this is the beauty of interval estimates because you see if you had used sample mean predict sample uh, mean as your direct prediction you can clearly see that is only in this particular trial the one i'm pointing right now in this particular trial and probably this that it's actually close to the sample mean in the rest of the cases it's absolutely not very close to the sample mean right it's it's close but it's not very close right so sample mean directly as a estimate point estimate is not very good so what you want to do is sample mean plus minus some confidence interval the beauty with that that is this right so even if you are you might be erroneous but almost if you do that 95 percent of if you do with the 95 percent confidence interval you would be you would be having an accuracy of 95% times, right? At least the population mean would be contained within your sample estimate that you have predicted, the interval. So in order to understand central limit theorem and understand why distribution of sample means is normally distributed, try tinkering about the shiny app. So this is something that I guess definitely you guys should have a look at it. Uh, you can click on the link and try and see if your central limit theorem kind of works out or not. Log on to Grey Atoms learning platform to unlock more free content. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates.